So why is video a good advocacy tool? We're all self-advocates in here, and a lot of us are already familiar with different types of videos. So why is it a good tool? Well, first of all, and I'm going to have you guys give me more answers because there's no way I covered everything on that slide over here. First of all, it's really easy to share with people. Video is very easy to share online with people. You can also put a lot of information in a video. When you have things to say, you can put it in a video. You can get it all in there. It also helps people get to know who you are because that's important too. It's really important that people have a sense of who it is that's advocating and video is a good way to let people know who you are and what you're talking about. You can also make people feel a certain way through video, right? So if you're really angry about something, let's say you're just really mad about budget cuts and you just want everyone to know how you're feeling and you want everyone to know that they should be angry right along with you, you can make them feel that way from your video. But what if you're really happy? What if something happened that was super awesome and you want everybody to know about it? Maybe you had an advocacy success. Maybe you had a personal success that you'd like to share with people. You can also make people feel happy along with you. So I know this is pretty basic stuff, but it's really important to remember because videos and putting yourself out there and shining on screen is power, it's empowering. So even though this seems basic, it's still really important to remember. And of course it shows your creativity. We're all creative people in this room, right? I love to be creative. I love to show people what I'm working on, talk about things, have a good time. So can you tell me what else makes video such a good tool for advocacy, maybe for you personally, that it brings in more people to your cause or your group or whatever you're working on. It gives you someone to relate to. It's a way to show people your personality because you can make it personal. You customize it. You're being creative, right? Yeah. The great thing about video is if you don't get it the first time or you don't get it the second time, maybe you'll get it the third time. So when it comes to creating a video, it's a really good way to practice your self-confidence. And it's also a really good way to remember that you don't have to be hard on yourself. If you mess up, if you make a mistake, start over. That's the really great thing about making videos. And sometimes you can just leave the mistake in there because that's real life, right? Yeah. That when it comes to self-advocacy, what's our motto? Nothing about us without us, right? And sometimes, or more than sometimes, a lot of the times, everything is about us without us, right? right. Yeah, that's kind of rough sometimes when you see people talking about you out there in the world and you're not there. You don't see yourself. This goes back to everything that I was saying earlier and it's so true and so important. If we don't see ourselves, if we're not the ones seeing ourselves, we have to make it so that we see ourselves. By making videos, by creating our own media and putting ourselves out there, we're speaking up for ourselves. So people without disabilities who are taking up space and who are not being very good allies to us, that's what we can do to change that. We can make our own media, right? Yeah, using your imagination, absolutely. Because what you can do when you're using your imagination is you can have a little fun with it. Maybe you make something animated. Maybe you say something funny. Maybe you make up a story, right? Mm -hmm. So there's so many different ways that you can use your imagination making a video. Absolutely. Crack a joke. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you can see there's so many ways that video is a great tool for advocacy. But now, and this may also seem like a bit of an obvious question, but you know, where can you watch and share videos? I put up some logos from the more obvious places, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Where else? How else? Oh, you now. You now. That's a that's a new one, right? Yeah. Where else? Snapchat, Snapchat right. 
Google. Google. Music? Musically? musically? Yeah, musically. Smule. Smule. Smule, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm not a cool kid anymore. I don't know all the cool stuff. Um, so I'm asking where in terms of yes, places on the internet, but also where in terms of how can you watch the video? Can you watch it by yourself? Can you watch it in a group? Can you show it as an educational tool? Can you show it to a legislator when you're advocating for something? So there are lots of platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, where you can place your video and you can find them, but also think about what you can do with those videos once you've posted them. You can do a lot with a video once you've posted it. And I have a little reminder here. We all know what hashtags are. We're in the cool kids room, right? So if we don't know, a hashtag is essentially putting a lot of us might know it as the number sign or the pound sign on a telephone. That's what I know it as before it became a hashtag. You put that before a word or a group of words and you use it to show people what you're talking about. So I put some examples. So if your video is about disability and you post it on Facebook and you want people to see that your video is about disability, you can put hashtag and then the word disability. So hashtag disability. And then once you hashtag it, other people can search that hashtag. They can search the word disability and it will help them make their way to your video. So the reason that I bring this up is because if we're gonna go through all the hard work of making a video, we should probably also make sure that people can find it, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, why is it important to see people with disabilities in the media? And this is a little bit of a quiz because I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think it's really important to talk about again. So first of all, and I'm gonna give a couple reasons, but I'm sure you all have a lot more. It supports self-confidence. I know we talked a little bit about self-confidence, right? And self-esteem within the disability community. And it also positively influences how others understand and see disability. We want to be positive influences to help people accept who we are, right? It also can influence policymakers. I do believe that policymakers see a video if it goes viral on YouTube about a particular disability issue or if it is shared around Facebook. I really, really do believe that videos have the power to make a difference. It's really, really important to see people with lots of different types of disabilities especially because we want to make sure that rather than feeling sorry for people, that we're recognizing that everyone is a person just like us. So if somebody is different than you are, if somebody has a different disability than you are, then when you watch them on a TV show or you hear about them on the news, it helps you to recognize that even though they may be different or they may be sick or they may have some kind of disability, that they're just like you and I. So I think it's really, really important that we see every different type of disability in the media. You know, I always say it's okay if you see that a person has a disability, but what's not okay is that you think that they're less of a person because of it. So we want people to see that being someone with a disability doesn't mean that we're not capable of doing certain things. We want people to see that having a disability is not something to be ashamed of. And there is so much that we can do and contribute. Absolutely. A lot of people just don't understand what it's like to have a disability, don't understand what it's like to be someone with a disability. And so they're afraid of it or they're afraid of us. And there's no reason for that, right? So we can use things like video to show people that we're people. Videos can be made with the help of professionals, sure, and I'm gonna show you an example of that, but you can also make your own videos, and I'm gonna show you an example of that. So I have two videos that I'm gonna show you, um, both videos that I have worked on, and I just wanna give you a little bit of an idea of what it is that I do when I create a video so that I can educate people. Hi, my name is Emily Ladau, and this is my mom, Ellen. Hello. As you can see, we both use wheelchairs because we have a genetic physical disability called Larsen syndrome that affects our joints and muscles. 
We're so often told that we shouldn't become parents because people believe that we're incapable of raising a child. But my mom has proof that this couldn't be further from the truth. When I became pregnant, a sonogram did reveal that my baby would have Larson syndrome. Of course, I was then concerned about the challenges of being a disabled parent of a disabled child. I had a lot of anxiety about it, you know, thinking that she would resent me or, you know, just knowing that she would ha go through certain experiences that I went through that were painful. Turns out my mom didn't need to be so worried. She's a wonderful mother. Unfortunately, though, according to a report by the National Council on Disability titled Rocking the Cradle, Ensuring the Rights of Parents with Disabilities and Their Children, Children of parents with disabilities are separated from their parents at disproportionately high rates. The report points out that the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 forbids the child welfare system from presuming that parents with disabilities are unfit. One day when I, Emily was younger, uh, we were leaving a medical office and some woman put together that I passed on the disability to my child and she made a comment look at what that mom did to her baby. I didn't respond because I was so stunned that somebody would say something that cruel. <laughs> but the thing is, no one with a disability should ever be made to feel guilty like that for having children. Sure, we had some bumps in the road as I grew up, but thanks to my mom and dad, I've always been safe and cared for. I live a full life and I know I am always loved. We're a lot like any other mother-daughter pair watching our favorite guilty pleasure TV shows together, shopping together, and of course, cooking together. Parents with disabilities need support and resources just like any other parent. My mom and I are asking you, please, don't just support the rights of parents with disabilities because it's the right thing to do. Respect them and recognize that people with disabilities can be great parents too. <laughs> oh, wait, you have to do that again. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> mean that she's not a good mother. That doesn't mean that she can't be my mother. And it doesn't mean that people with disabilities can't be parents too. So I used this video as a tool to educate people about that as a way to help fight against the discrimination that so often occurs against people with disabilities who want to become parents. So did you learn anything from the video? Did you take away anything from the video? This is not a discussion necessarily about parenting or about parents with disabilities, but was there anything you noticed in the video about what I did to make sure that I was educating people about the issue? Laughter, that's wonderful. Laughter, right. Because you remember when something is funny and you're yeah. laughing, right? Yeah. Talk about your disabilities and your mom had the same disability as Right. So we showed what we can do, right? I'm going to take like one more if you have it. Yeah. Say that again? I have a son. You have a son? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a video that would help educate people that, right, you're, you're a good mom, right? It shows that you can be a mom, right? Absolutely. I'm going to show you one more video. Hi, I'm Emily Ladau and my mom Ellen is with me. Hi. And we are both wheelchair users and we'd like to go out for a little midday stroll. You can see our shadows here in front of us. And there's been a bit of a snowstorm. We live in the northeast and we are just a few feet away from our driveway and we're going to see what happens when we actually try to make it up onto the sidewalk by using the curb cut. So we will we go. keep going. And you can see that we did not make it very far. We are stuck by a pile of snow and somewhere in front of me is supposed to be a sidewalk and a curb cut. Uh, the town did plow, but as you can see, we have no way to go anywhere until the snow melts. So this has been a friendly PSA 
to please, please shovel the sidewalk and clear the curb cuts in front of your business so that we can all get where we have to go. Thank you. Thank you. So that video was a little less professional than the other one, but did you still get the message? What was the message? Shovel your gosh darn sidewalks, people. You don't need fancy editing. You didn't even see my face. You just saw my shadow, but you saw the pile of snow. And it took about 20 seconds for you to say, oh my God, that is a lot of snow. Shovel your sidewalks, everyone. So that video got an emotional response from you. That's another way that videos are a really good tool for advocacy. Yeah, it's so unsafe. And so with videos like that, all you have to do is take a phone or take a camera and you film the video and you say, shovel your sidewalks. And then you put it on Facebook or you put it on YouTube and you just made an advocacy video. So now we're gonna talk about what you can use to film a video because I don't want anyone to think that they can't do it. So if you have a computer with a webcam, if you have a smartphone with a video camera, if you have any kind of digital camera or regular video camera, if, yeah, if you have a tripod or a selfie stick. How many of you have seen selfie sticks? They're kind of silly, but they're a good tool. They're a good tool if you want to make a video. So when you use those tools, whether it's by yourself or with friends, family, or your circle of support, you can also make a video. So now, like I promised, we're going to practice making our own videos, okay? So... What we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda separate up into groups. I'm not going to do it in any sort of specific way. I want you to do what's comfortable for you. If you wanna do it by yourself, that's okay. If you don't have access to something to do it, you can either come over to me, I have a phone, we can record some video. Um, we can record some video on a friend's phone, perhaps some people will share their phones, you know. So we're just gonna practice right now. And if you don't wanna record anything, that's okay. Like I said before, you can be behind the scenes. Maybe you wanna be the director. Maybe you wanna be the stage manager. Whatever you wanna do, we're all gonna learn how to make videos today. So there are a couple things you need to ask yourself before we practice. So first I wanna know, what is your video topic going to be? Don't tell me, don't tell me yet, but what is your video topic going to be? So pick a topic, pick something that you're passionate about, something that you wanna talk about. And we're gonna try to keep it maybe like a 30 second video or so. So nothing too wild, okay? We're just getting our feet wet today, we're just practicing today. Then you're gonna decide what information you want to tell the people who are watching. So if you're talking, if your topic is shoveling the sidewalks, the information you wanna tell people is that you can't get onto the sidewalks because there's snow covering the sidewalks. And then, what is the key message that you want your viewers to take away? So, what is that message? I want viewers to know that they should shovel their sidewalks so that people with disabilities can safely access their sidewalks. So now you kind of see how you follow. You just start with a topic and then you expand it a little bit until you have a full message that you want people to take away from it. So we're gonna practice. This is very low pressure, no pressure. I want you all to have fun. And maybe some of you at the end will have a video that we can either find a way to share with the group or you can put it on your own social media. All right, so we're gonna break up now. I wanna try to not get too, too loud because otherwise they're gonna kick us out of the hotel and never welcome me back. Um, so, so let's just kind of do our thing. This is an experiment. This is experimental, so we'll see how it goes. I will come around. You can share with me your ideas. You can ask me questions. If you need help filming, I have a camera here. I know a couple other people I see have a camera. So have fun with it. And it's 11.30 and this ends at 12. So we're gonna get back together, I would say, at about 11.50 and talk a little bit about our experiences. So we have about 20 minutes.